kind of slam his arm down. Here's Drake Toll. Welcome back into the Petty Clinic Low T Bears Dan. Happy Thursday, Thursday, everybody. Talking Baylor baseball most of today as they are trying to find their way into the NCAA postseason this year after a loss today to Kansas State 9-4 in Oklahoma City. We're now joined by really one of the, the Baylor legends of the Steve Rodriguez era, as short as it has been so far, and that is Troy Montemayor. Troy, thanks for coming on the show today. Hope you're doing well, man. I am. Thank you for having me. A pleasure, and I know that a lot of Baylor fans out there will uh, remember your your career, your era at Baylor, playing baseball for Steve Rod and the Bears. But one of the things that uh, that really I think is lost on a lot of folks is the fact that you played for both Coach Smith and Coach Rod, had a completely different staff in the middle of your career at Baylor. Man, what was that like for you? Yeah, you know, as a walk on with Smith, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we had a, we had a rough year. Um, and that transition with coach Rod and, and coach Strauss, um, you know, we brought a lot of guys in a lot of guys that, you know, uh, that roster was very inflated, uh, my sophomore year. And it was basically a second walk on for me, um, learning a new coaching staff, a whole new system, whole new strength coach. Um, it was, it was very hectic sophomore year. Um, and we had our growing pains, like, a lot of teams with new coaches do, um, you know, finished out my career on a high note, winning the big 12 championship. Um, you know, hopefully, um, you know, we set the tone for, for what this program is supposed to be about and that's championship baseball. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the, you know, what we instilled in, in, in our legacy that we left for these guys. Hmm. Well, Troy, I, I want to bounce to current this season, what you've seen from these guys for a little bit, and then get here toward the end, really, where you are now, and f- just a, an insight on your career. But with today's game, uh, I, I know you got a chance to watch some of it. I'll tell you 3 nothing. It looks good for Baylor. Hayden Kettler is one of the best pitchers you got left out there for the Big 12 tournament with some injuries and COVID dealings. And 3 nothing looks solid. Kettler's throwing well, and really the wheels fall off there late in the game. Yeah, you know, frustrating ending um, to honestly a very good season. Um, Bears, you know, projected eighth uh, coming into the, the season. And I know um, if you had told a lot of people that we, we were coming into the last weekend with a chance to, you know, be an at-large bid, uh, I know a lot of people wouldn't have believed wouldn't have believed you. Um, so they definitely exceeded expectations. Uh, very young team. You know, we've got a couple pieces that are, you know, those super seniors like Andy Thomas and, and Tyler Thomas. But other than that, it's young, man. The future's bright. Um, and if they do end up falling out of the regional bid, you know, I, I'm, I'm very excited to see what they can do uh, next season. Troy, it's so interesting to me, the dynamic that these teams have with their conference tournaments, whether it be the Big 12, ACC, SEC, just playing a conference tournament in baseball is so different for so many teams. You remember that run, the conference title run. What was that like for you guys? And really, what is the message, the strategy that goes into winning or being competitive in a conference tournament? It's one game at a time. Um, it's postseason baseball. And it, the hardest part is everybody's fighting for their life here. You know, I mean, everybody, you know, knows that if, if they don't win, this, this season's over. You know, and a lot of seniors on that team, that's the end of their, their run. They're never going to play baseball again. So that's that's what make these conference tournaments pretty hard. Um you know, you got careers on the line and, you know, people are going to fight for uh, every single out. Um, that, that conference run was absolutely, you know, super special. I, I didn't pitch until the last game. Um, you know, I, I was right on the cusp of that save record. And I, I told myself, man, I'd much rather get that win and get that, you know, conference championship than break that save record. And that's exactly what happened. Um, and it was it was magical, honestly. Troy, with that, you know, we've looked at teams like Arkansas, Texas, even TCU to an extent that can go into their conference tournaments, lose two games, still be a national seed. And I mean, a loss stings, but it really doesn't affect them that much. Going into a conference tournament, being a team that needs to win. I mean, you were a part of teams in the Big 12 tournament that needed to win the whole thing or win a few games to go to the postseason. How is the message different? How is the pressure different? Well, I know my senior year, I, I feel like we were, you know, we, we actually had a couple games over 500 in conference for the first time in, in you know, since the Smith era. Um, we were feeling pretty confident. We actually thought winning that tournament was going to give us a regional uh, host site. Um, and we were very surprised uh, to learn that we hadn't gotten it. Um, so that was the biggest thing, you know, like we, we knew, you know, Baylor had not won a conference championship in, in school history. Um, so, the, the goal, the message that year was let's be the first team to do it, right? 
Um, the whatever happens after that, whatever the committee decides to do, you know, that's that's on them. But let's just be that first team to win that championship. Um, that's what we were able to do. I think this year, um, you know, they they knew exactly what they needed. Um, they knew their backs were against the wall, and just unfortunately, you know, T. Tom and and Blake Helton were both out. Um, you know, with with some COVID and some injuries, and you know, that's just unfortunate. That's just the way that it goes sometimes. Mm-hmm. Tell me, yo, Troy, with these guys that are still hanging around on the team that you played with, we, we joke on the show, I mean, at this point, Andy Thomas is like 34. He's got four kids. He's, I mean, the guy has been playing baseball at Baylor for a decade, it feels like. I mean, you got to play with some of these guys on the team, still seeing them out there, but now as the senior leader that you were when they were there, what is that dynamic like? It's fun watching them grow. You know, they, they were young wide-eyed and, and very talented, but they just didn't have that experience. Um, they didn't know how to be leaders. Um, and just watching them over the last couple of years, um, it's, it's going to be really sad watching a lot of those talented guys um, depart from the program because, uh, you know, they've been an absolute joy to watch. Um, you know, I, I don't know who's coming back next year. Um, with the whole COVID thing, who's, who's got a chance to get drafted and all that, that stuff. But, um, you know, if we do lose, you know, a majority of those guys, I just want to say it's been it's been absolute joy to watch those guys play. Troy, on that note, you've got a guy like Luke Boyd, who has stepped into that closer role this season, has been All-American caliber. His ERA has not gone above 1.5. We, we talked to Coach Strauss earlier this week about how had Baylor's offense not been so good, Boyd would have had more save opportunities. There were just so many games where he either A, wasn't needed, or B, the team had six runs atop a team when he came in. A guy like Luke, Luke Boyd watching him, what has that been like for you as a former closer? Man, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, it's saves are such a team thing. You know, you, you really want to say that, no, it's an individual stat, but it's really not. So many things have to go right for you to, you know, just be in that position. Um, you know, I, the most save opportunities I had was 15 my sophomore year, and then it slowly dwindled down as the team got better because we're scoring more runs. So those games aren't as close anymore. Um, and, you know, we led the lead, league in average this year. Um, a lot of these games are very lopsided uh, whenever we did win, the, win, win them and, you know, Boyd just didn't get aligned when he did. Um, you know, it was fun watching my roommate Kyle Hill take that take that closer role, have an absolutely incredible All American season. Um, you know, and and Boyd did the exact same. It's kind of turning into closer you, and I think it's been really fun to watch. And I'm sure John Strauss is just having the time of his life having closers come in and and be successful like that. On top of that, Troy, a guy in Tyler Thomas that really found his own this season, it felt like. Going into the year, there was a big question on who's going to be that guy for Baylor that steps into a Friday role and is consistent across the board. And T. Tom did that coming in the middle of the season. What makes him so good at what he does? Well, he's had the talent. He's had the talent since since freshman year, and he, he just didn't have it you know, between the years for, for a while. And, and that's just, that's, that's growing pains of a, of a freshman sophomore. Um, but at this point he's logged so many innings. He's he has been there, done that, man. There's nothing that he hasn't seen at this point. Um, he's been in, you know, postseason games, regionals. Um, he's had, you know, faced a lot of adversity and, and that comes, you know, that experience really helps a pitcher grow. Um, and, you know, he, he took that and he ran with it and he turned into a, you know, an absolute stud for a Friday guy. You know what? If if he didn't miss a couple of weeks for COVID, you know I, I don't I don't see why he shouldn't have been first team All Big Twelve this year. Troy, with that, not just the individual pitching staff, but the team as a whole, whether it be the batters or the that pitching group. When you look at their success in Big Twelve play, what do you attribute that to? What made this team so good when they were at their best? Experience, um, especially that. That staff, you know, Keller and Teton, like I said, been there forever. That bullpen, you know, we, we had a great bullpen my senior year, and those guys that are there now were, were right under us watching us, how we did it, how we prepared mentally and, and physically, and, you know, how, how we were supposed to, you know, stay healthy throughout a season. Um, and that's the biggest thing. You know, I, I know there have been some pains. Um, you know, there's, there's been some struggles. But, you know, thankfully for the most part, the, the staff has stayed healthy, and that's the biggest thing at this point in the year. 
You talk about the older guys and, and you know, you look across the roster and see so many of them being staples in this lineup. And then you got guys like Jared McKenzie, Kyle Nevin, Trey Richardson, some of the young guys, the young blood that come that come in and have really performed this season. That dynamic of old and young has seemed to work so well for Baylor this year, too. What do you see in those younger guys, Jared McKenzie being really the star of them, that have shown this season? I mean, I, I like Jared the, since last year for in a shortened season, and I, I, you know, I told my dad, man, that's my new favorite player right away. I just I saw his first week, and I was, I was sold right away. I um, mean, he's he's blossomed into a star. Um, projected first round draft pick, you know, in in twenty twenty two, and there's there's no doubt that in my mind that that's going to happen. But um, just you know, a lot of bright spots. You know, Trey Trey really came into his own this year. Um, started the year a little bit slow, but he he really. Turned out to be a staple in that, uh, you know, middle of the middle of the infield, um, you know, and, and, you know, coach Rod does an excellent job, you know, with, with bringing in players and developing those players um, once they get them in there. So, you know, I, you know, we're going to lose, we're going to lose a lot of the bullpen, a lot of those old guys, those new old guys are going to, they're going to be gone, but I have no doubt in my mind that they're going to be able to, uh, you know, fill those spots as needed. Troy, across this season, you know, you got the win at Texas Tech in Lubbock. There's the non-conference winning streak, the four-series winning streak in Big 12. I mean, there are a lot of things you can point to to what have made this team postseason contenders. For you, if you're in front of the committee making a case, then what is uh, really what is your case for Baylor baseball to move forward and play in a regional? I mean, that, 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 that series win against Texas Tech, obviously, it should be the staple of the year. You know, and no team has done that since 2018. I, I found that to be a remarkable stat. Um, you know, that's a, we hated playing in Lubbock, honestly, man. That was, you know, just that drive up there, and then that is such a, you know, grueling ballpark, um, and those fans are absolutely just wear you down. Um, so, if anything, that's, that's definitely what you got to hang your hat on. Um, you know, taking a game in Oklahoma State, um, I think – you know, I thought solidified our regional, uh, you know, our regional bubble uh, birth. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, we, we lost T. Tommy in that OU series. And I think that really uh, hurt us. I, I hope the committee takes a look at who we didn't have uh, available and, and factors that into the decision as well. Troy, then for you, I mean, an, an illustrious career at Baylor. I, I look at uh, you started a game as a freshman, just how your role changed across your career at Baylor. I mean, was being a closer always where you wanted to be? Absolutely not. No, I, uh, everybody wants to come in and be the Friday guy, right? You know, that's, that's, you know, that's what get all the scouts attention. And and that's, you know, where all the hype is at is being the Friday guy, but you know what? Um, I, I talk about this with, with my parents a lot, but, um, that Tuesday start that I had that one start I had in my career, went terrible and I'm so glad that it did because if I had a good start maybe I would have gotten another one maybe I would have had another one um maybe I would have been a starter in my career my career would have been absolutely different um but you know God is good and it worked out exactly how it's supposed to um because I didn't have a good start they wanted me in that bullpen and you know I with that new staff you know they just wanted guys who had experience and they they threw me in that closer role and you know I just thrived in that um but it was exactly where I was supposed to be and you know, it worked out from there. When Coach Steve Rodriguez and Coach John Strauss came into Baylor, <laughs> the California hippie guys from out west that were coaching this small school down in Texas, what was it like, the transition early on for you individually as a player? Um, it, was a, it was a huge learning curve. Um, there were a lot of things that we did my freshman year that, you know, we just completely wiped the slate clean with and, and, you know, had to completely revamp, um, you know, the, the way we train, the way we, you know, our nutrition, everything was completely different. Um, and the results, the results showed on the field, um, you know, the throwing programs, all that stuff, all that good stuff that Strauss um, brought into us, especially with the pitching staff. You know, I know that Rod and his hitters got their own thing and then coach Mike Taylor and they do a fantastic job. And obviously, you know, with the averages that are showing, they do a fantastic job, but just with the pitching staff, um, and there were a lot of new things. Um, and, you know, like I said, there were growing pains. But, you know, it, every year got a little bit better. The numbers showed it. And, you know, that's that I can attribute that to Strauss for sure. Troy, you got to see Coach Steve Rodriguez build the foundation of a program and try to reset a culture at Baylor with the baseball team. 
for you, uh, what is your confidence in Coach Rod, Coach Strauss, that they're going to a College World Series, they're going to have an illustrious career here at Baylor? They get, the, they get the right guys. You know, they get guys that, you know, not only are good on the field, but off the field as well. Um, you know, they, they were able to weed out some of the, you know, not so good, you know, things about what we had on the old, old team. And they got the right kind of people in there. They got, you know, servant hearted kids that, that want to be there and that want to help the program succeed. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing is just getting the right kinds of people there and they have the right staff to do it. Mm. Troy, for you then being drafted to the Cardinals, I mean, a second team, all big 12. I do want to start in that 2018 season for you coming into that year, being a senior, one of those older leader guys, what was it like for you to be looked to as a consistent player? I know a lot of guys, as a closer, the pressure is on because you're expected to perform no matter what every time you go out there and you're a senior. Younger guys looking up to you. Just the pressure of that 2018 year. What was it like? How did you handle that? You know what, man? I was just having a good time. Um, my uh, setup guy, Drew Robertson, and I, you know, we made just like this little pact at the beginning of the year. Let's just have fun, man. Like, this is it. You know, who knows if we're going to get drafted? Like, I, I'm not sure, but let's just enjoy the ride. Let's just do these games. We got 50 of them, so let's just have a good time while we're doing it. And the pressure off. Um, I, like I said, I was chasing that saves record, and that really kept my mind focused on what I needed to do. Obviously, um, you know, it was it was uh, a, a team thing. If I didn't get opportunities, I wasn't going to, you know, at least tie that record. Um, I got just enough. Um but yeah, you know, that, that, that really made it, you know, simplified it for me. It's just, you know, a number that I needed to get and whatever happened after that happened. With you, Troy, you go first team, all big 12, second team, all big 12, and then drafted to the Cardinals organization, your draft experience. Now there are a lot of guys here on Baylor's team. that are going to go through that here pretty soon. I've heard plenty of people say that it's, it's hectic. It's different. There's no way to really prepare for it. What was it like from your experience? Yeah. I mean, I, I heard from, you know, a dozen different teams. Um, and the Cardinals were not one of them. You know, I got a call from them the day before I got drafted that said, Hey, we're probably going to pick you up. And I hadn't heard from them. I had heard from other teams, you know, for like the two months prior and, you know, they came out of nowhere. Um, so yeah, it definitely is, you know, hectic, but you know, it's, it's some it's an experience I would never have traded, you know, hmm. And then, Troy, going through the, the minor league process, kind of from then, from that draft day in 2018 to now, where has life taken you? I know there are a lot of Baylor fans who uh, maybe haven't been able to keep up and want to know where you are. Yeah, you know, I'm in San Antonio. I'm back home, uh, and I work uh, in healthcare. I work over at one of the hospitals here. Um, I just cover some, you know, different kinds of surgeries and stuff like that. I'm just trying to give back. And it's been crazy with COVID, you know what, but, um, you, know, that's, you know, that's just what we're doing now. Um, had that one, had that one year in the minor leagues. That was very hectic. Um, it was a very good experience. Like I said, I wouldn't have traded that, but I, I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing right now. Well, tell me, Troy, last question for you. Everything put together, I know it's so tough for a lot of guys to be able to, to keep up with Baylor and stay in the loop once they leave alumni, whether they be athletes or not. For you, I mean, how much do you follow this Baylor baseball program and what does really Baylor baseball mean to you? I mean, it's, it's, it's family. You know, I, I still stay in touch with guys. I'm texting T Tom right now. Um, we're, we're just trying to keep up with the game, trying to keep up with what's going to happen. Hopefully he, he, uh, you know, gets a, a postseason star. We're really hoping that the committee helps him out here, but these are lifelong friends and I'm not, I, you know, I'm not ever going to forget. Um, and you know, I, I definitely have kept up with them this season. Um, for, you know, as much as I can, I love Baylor sports, you know what? And, that men's basketball championship, never going to forget that either. Uh, well, I mean, that was absolutely incredible. But, yeah, you know, Baylor baseball is, you know, always going to be family for me. I love it. A proud alum. Troy, our uh, Bear Games question of the day today has been so amazingly fun for those that have crazy answers, but yours may just be straightforward. Because this, this question today is centered around Baylor baseball. We give it to all our callers and guests, and that's if you could play one position for Baylor baseball – for one Baylor baseball team, whether it be 2012, 2018, all the way back to 99, which baseball team would it be and which position would it be? Again, this is like way more fun for the callers that didn't actually play for Baylor baseball, but we still have to give it to you. No, I, you know what? I would have closed on that 2005 team. Um, I, I uh, you know, the dream was to go to Omaha, you know, and they had the team to do it. To get that final out in our Super Regional that they hosted – 
to go to Omaha, I, I, I can't imagine a more surreal experience. That would have been amazing. Well, I'll tell you what, Troy, if they would have had you in 2012, it'd be a second Omaha appearance seven years later. One out away, one out away. But, uh, hey, in the end, I'm sure Steve Rodriguez and Coach John Strauss will get him there. Troy, I want to thank you for joining the show today, giving us your perspective on Baylor baseball. Glad to know you're doing well. And, and man, just congratulations on everything. I know you had an illustrious career at Baylor, and good to know you're doing well still. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thanks again. Again, Troy Montemayor, former Baylor closer, joining the show today, who – Really, he led the Bears in saves. First team All Big 12, then second team All Big 12, back to back in the junior and senior seasons. Drafted in the Cardinals organization, working in healthcare now in San Antonio after a year in the minor.